part in preparing for their annual festival when the clock hits 10 a.m. At this very moment, everyone in the town falls asleep, including birds and other animals. Some lie unconscious in their houses, and others in the middle of the street. A man named Mike is driving away from the city at the same time. When he is about to cross the border, he too falls asleep, causing his car to crash and explode. Soon, the incident catches the attention of the people from the neighboring town. Police and forensic doctors come to investigate, but everyone who crosses the border falls asleep instantly. After some research, they find the town is connected to no nuclear or chemical plant that might have caused a chemical leak. That means that whatever is happening to the town is beyond human knowledge. One of the doctors investigating the scene is named Alan. He is also a resident of the town and is worried because his wife Barbara is not answering his calls. Hours pass, and at exactly 4 p.m., everyone wakes up simultaneously. Alan rushes to Barbara and asks her what happened, but she is as confused as the rest of the town. The town school principal, Jill, turns out to be Mike's wife. Upon finding out about his death, she is heartbroken. No scientist or philosopher is able to tell what caused the town to sleep and then to wake up. With no explanation found, life runs normally in Midwich. People forget about the incident and go about their lives for the next few weeks. Then, Alan notices many pregnancies happening in the town. A woman named Callie, who hasn't been with anyone for over a year, gets pregnant. Alongside her, Principal Jill and Alan's wife Barbara are also pregnant. In only a week, every single woman in the town is expecting, and all of them date from the day of the blackout. An epidemiologist working for the federal government named Susan is sent to the town to investigate the pregnancies. She offers them $3,000 per family from the government's side if they decide to keep the baby. Most people who are waiting to abort the fetuses agree to keep them after learning about the money. This is the 60s after all. $3,000 can afford you more than a month's rent. Months pass in the blink of an eye, and all the women go into labor on the same day. They give birth to pale-skinned and silver-haired babies, who all look like they could be siblings. Five boys and four girls of such features are born, but one of them is stillborn. We see Dr. Susan bring the dead baby to her car. She takes it away to a lab to perform experiments and hopefully find out the true nature of the babies. For the first few months, everything goes normally, since the babies are not developed enough to interact. But soon, Jill notices her son David turning more intelligent with time. When he starts to crawl, he can even spell his own name. Barbara and Alan have also noticed their daughter, Mara's, strange behavior. They ignore it for the most part, but one day, Barbara sees Mara's eyes glow. The little girl hypnotizes her mother and makes her dip her arm into boiling water. Barbara is saved when Jill arrives at the house, but the incident never leaves her mind. She starts being scared of her daughter, so much so that her thoughts go into a very dark place. Hence, one day, she goes to the cliff near their house and commits the unthinkable. Alan is heartbroken by his wife's death. He knows that Mara had something to do with it, but he refuses to talk about it with anyone. Meanwhile, Dr. Susan has been observing the children closely ever since their births. She and the people from the government research team are in a meeting. They discuss the changes in the behavior of the children and come to the conclusion that the increasing accidents and deaths might be related to them. They have also observed that Alan's daughter Mara is the leader. They assume she can read people's thoughts and act accordingly to it, but are yet to prove the theory. Alan has long since lost interest in the research program, not wanting to know the truth about his daughter. However, Dr. Susan thinks he can be an asset to the experiment and wants to bring him back. A few more years pass, and the children grow up. Even at five years old, they are more intelligent than most adults. This is a small town in the USA though, so that's not surprising. They always walk in a line, paired up with their partners, except for David, whose partner died at birth. People look at them in the street and know that they are not normal, but no one is brave enough to cross their paths. One day, Mara tries reading Dr. Susan's mind and figures out that she has found a way to block her thoughts. The children decide to stay aware of her after that. They have to go through monthly health checkups to ensure nothing significant has changed in their bodies. In one of those checkups, a doctor accidentally hurts a girl's eye. 
As a result, Mara hypnotizes her and makes her pour harmful chemicals into her own eyes. This causes the doctor to be rushed to the hospital. She does not remember what happened to her, but her eyes are as good as blind after the incident. Although there is no proof, everyone in the town knows it was the kids. Jill is worried about her son, but she cannot let the deaths and accidents slide away. Hence, she suggests that Alan teach the special children away from the rest of the children in their class. Alan thinks there is nothing he can teach them, but Jill argues that they have to learn humanity. After the conversation, Alan walks to his daughter and holds his hand out to her. However, Mara simply walks away. She doesn't have an ounce of compassion in her, which Alan refuses to acknowledge. At night, Jill tries brushing David's hair, but he doesn't let her. He claims that there is no need for her to be emotionally invested in him, because emotions are useless. David has been on TikTok too much. He reads her mind and finds her thinking about her late husband. The mother and son resonate with each other because David too lost his partner at birth. Looking deep into his mother's thoughts, he finds out about the word empathy and its meaning. The following day, Mara and the group are walking in line as always. Suddenly, David does something that no one from the group has ever dared to do. He walks away without Mara's permission. Mara thinks it is strange but doesn't stop him this time. David goes to the cemetery to look for his partner's grave. There, he finds the woman who had lost the baby at birth. She hates all the special children because they remind her of the child she lost. She says mean things to David, but he looks into her thoughts and feels empathy for the first time. Later, he also meets Alan, who is there to visit Barbara's grave. David reveals that he is here to visit his partner, which surprises Alan, because David was never told about the stillborn. As they chat, the kid finds out that Alan has also lost someone important to him. He holds Alan's hand, acting on his emotional urges. This gives Alan hope that special children can change if taught to have emotions. He agrees to be their teacher and arranges their first class the next day. While studying anatomy, the children repeatedly say the eyes are the window to a person's soul. Alan explains that they should study that in philosophy, but the kids remain adamant about the answer. He is also surprised by the synchronization among them when taking books out or putting them back. A while later, the kids are alone when a drunk janitor comes into the classroom and threatens to kill them. They refrain from hurting him for some time, but as soon as he touches one of the kids, all of their eyes start to glow. The man is then made to climb a ladder and jump onto a vehicle. The stick he was holding stabs him in the chest, causing him to die immediately. The next day, Alan goes to Susan and asks her what progress she has made in her research. Susan reveals that their town isn't the only one going through the same situation. In fact, several small villages around the globe have had blackouts and pregnancies following them. She then brings Alan to a secret room and shows him the infant that was stolen a long time ago. The experiments performed on the baby have brought out its original form, which is one of a strange alien creature. After the meeting, Alan returns home and finds Mara packing her belongings. She and the special kids want to stay in a barn away from the town. She orders Alan to bring supplies for them and doesn't care to explain further. All parents reluctantly bring their children to the barn, scared of what will happen if they refuse. The following day, a man named Bill comes to the barn to meet his daughter. He claims that he has the right to take her back, but the special children do not like that. When he refuses to leave them alone, they hypnotize him and make him crash his car into a fuel tank. At the same time, Susan comes to Alan and reveals that the government is planning to bomb the entire town to get rid of the kids. I would have just busted out the sniper rifle, but to each their own. She is running away, and so should Alan. Alan quickly goes to the children and asks them to live in harmony. If they don't, they will be killed. However, Mara declares that emotions are for the weak. Instead, she asks him to bring everyone a supply box, which they will use to move far away from the town. A while later, Mara stops David and asks him about his strange behavior. Before David can explain himself, the town pastor is caught in the bushes, pointing his gun at Mara. The kids kill him as well. 
When it gets dark, the children find Dr. Susan in the clinic's hallway. This time, her mask slips, and the group finds out she is the one who stole the stillborn. They take her to the secret lab and make her stab herself. Meanwhile, the entire town gathers outside the barn to destroy it and retaliate against the special children, but the children attack the protesters and kill them all in no time. A woman is burned to death after being hypnotized. Alan and Jill meet each other and decide that it is about time the children die, because if not, others will. Alan doesn't want to put Jill's life in danger, so he runs away. After locking her inside a room, he enters the barn with a box of explosives. The children are now ready to move, but one thing leaves Mara uncomfortable. She cannot read Alan's thoughts because he is blocking them with a wall. At the same time, Jill arrives at the back of the room and tries to take David away. The children spot her, but they cannot focus on two people at the same time. Mara tries her best to find out what is behind Alan's brain wall. Just when she sees the explosives, the vision becomes reality and kills everyone other than David and Jill. In the last scene, we see David and Jill driving away to a different city. Jill is hopeful that they can start a new life, leaving Midwich behind. But they probably can't, because they just blew up a bunch of kids. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching. Subscribe Mysterious Movies.